very soon will make history by becoming the first disabled woman to play a leading role on American television. She's our guest in studio this morning. Welcome back to Toronto. Thank you so much for having me. I remember I'm first so hearing excited. you. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I want to know, back to that talk, you said that you were a multiple minority in the U.S. What is it like to live as a minority in the U.S.? It is absolutely fabulous being a multiple minority with Donald Trump as president. Yeah, what's I that mean, like? I mean, you know how much he loves Muslims, and he's a huge advocate of women. So it's become much, much easier than it was under Barack Obama right Can now. imagine. Um, it's a nightmare, but I'm doing okay. It's really interesting because um, there's always been a bit of bigotry against Muslims, but it has skyrocketed under the current administration, and it's gotten downright frightening. Um, I'm a public Muslim figure, so I get threats all the time, but I also have an opportunity to educate people and to contradict the negative stereotypes that they're being fed. So even though it's a challenge, I like being given the opportunity to show who we really are. I want to talk about one of those opportunities coming up, but first I want to share some statistics, and that's about representation. Uh, right now, we see a lot of move towards, uh, you know, casting people of race as their race, but we don't see that same representation when it comes to disability. So uh, when they cast actors in roles for disabled people, take a uh, Shape of Water, for example, yeah. Sally Hawkins' character is mute, but Sally Hawkins herself is not mute. Uh, disability are the largest minority group in America, fewer than 2% do we see on screen, and able-bodied actors play 95% of disabled TV characters. What are your thoughts on that? There's a couple things going on. One is that I want to address that when we talk about disability on TV, we're talking about visible disability, because we have no idea how many people with invisible disabilities grace our screens, because the stigma is so strong that a lot of people are afraid to reveal that they have an invisible disability. Hmm. So just talking about visible disability itself, we always say, if you can't see it, you can't be it. So we need to have more people with disabilities on television so that there are positive image, so that there's less fear towards it. And I don't understand why when we talk about diversity, we don't talk about disability. Because without the D, you don't have diversity. And the D comes from the disability. So it's, as you said, we're 20% of the population. One in three households has a disabled person, but we're not reflected on television. And when you have kids seeing people play disabled and then walking down the red carpet completely healed, it's really disenchanting. I remember being a kid and watching Little House on the Prairie and they had a blind character and he was in an explosion and suddenly he could see. And I was like, Daddy, blow me up, heal me. You know, so you have to be able to see yourself to know that you can be it. And also, I think that we need to be on both sides of the screen. I think we need to be on air, but we also need to be behind the scenes. Because whenever you talk about disability, it's the same three stories. Either heal me, you can't love me because I'm disabled, or kill me. There are a lot of movies where the protagonist who's disabled is killed, and it's a relief to their family. And I want to change that up. I want to mainstream disability and have people realize we're living the same lives as everyone else. We're not always happy. We're not always sad. We don't all want to be healed. We want love. We want success. And you're, you're on the front lines of that now. You've just got signed for a TV show in the fall. You are going to make history in the United States. So you, you are, are you writing the show and starring in it? I am the, I'm the creator, writer, and I have an amazing, amazing head writer named Joanna Qureshi. I'm super proud of that because it's hard to get a lot of women behind the scenes, so I'm happy my team has women. But yeah, I'm blessed and lucky. I'm working with Hazy Mills Productions, um, which Sean Hayes from Will & Grace is a partner in, and we're making a show called If I Can Can. And uh, yeah, the goal is just to have a super funny show where the lead happens to be disabled because we haven't seen it. And I think it's incredible that in the history of American television, there's never been a visibly disabled woman leading a show. And we are also missing from like the talk shows. You know, The View has a 20 year history. They've never had a visibly disabled woman. So I want to change that. I want people to realize not only can we do it, but we're worth watching. One of the things I love about you, Maysoon, is that not only do you make people laugh, but you really make people think and motivate for change. Thanks for coming on this morning. Thank you so much for having me. This was so much fun, and I love your hair and makeup crew. They, aren't they great? They, 
I mean, I'm the lost Kardashian right now. You, uh, you look at, you look at. That is Nikki and Eduardo. We're gonna <laughs> give a shout out to them for sure. Thanks so much for being here Thank this morning. You.